Hi folks, and welcome to Center Lane. I'm Bruce Hitchin. Today, we're looking at this 2019 S63 Cabrio. The S-Class is Mercedes' flagship luxury car, but what makes this car extra special is that it's a convertible. The S-Class is much more common in a sedan or a coupe, but the convertible is quite rare. Now, the car belongs to Kim Trowbridge. Kim's been featured on the show before. He showed us his amazing collection of Jaguars, and we also featured his 1981 Mercedes 380 SL. Before we start, remember to like and subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new episodes. Kim, tell me about the Mercedes. What made you want to get this car? Well, Mercedes, um uh, has a storied past of having four seat convertibles and they made a series called the the uh, 280SE 5.3 and it ended in 1971 and then 44 years before they introduced another four place convertible so the SLs were out there all those other cars were out there but not a four seat convertible this was uh, a nod to that era and they launched it in 2015. There's actually four models. There's, there's the S560, uh, the S63, which this is, the S65, which is a V12 version, and then an S650, which is a Bybach version. Very, very rare. The, both are 12 cylinders, but both are rear wheel drive. Uh, but the S63 is kind of the sweet spot in the performance because it's all wheel drive and it's faster than the other ones. Okay. So that's why I have the S63 is because it's the fastest one. Now you said it's a bit rare. They, they, these, they didn't make a lot of these cars, right? No, they were not a commercial success essentially as they weren't back then. I think in uh, the, the uh, two years that they were produced, uh, 70 and 71, 3,200 coupes were produced and a little over 1,200 uh, cabriolets. And this was the same kind of success level. They're very rare. This car, Mercedes, uh, uh, we looked it up through the dealership, and this car in the current color combination and, and uh, uh, configuration, there were only five built with the exact same livery so all of the specifications this is an all boxes checked car so it has everything you can get on it there is one so this is one of one wow yeah whenever i think of it in an a 63 in a mercedes whether it's an s63 or an e63 i think of a 6.3 liter 12 cylinder car right but this is not that can you tell me a little bit about the engine that's in this car and how that transition has taken place? Yeah, so for for about six decades, Mercedes has worked very hard at confusing everyone with their nomenclature for these cars. They used to have to do with the, with the displacement, but they sometimes do and they sometimes don't. In this case, it does not. And you're right, the 6.3 used to be their V12 or W12 style engine. Um, this is a four liter V8 twin turbo, and the turbos are tucked in the valley of the V, so it's a very short throw. So it, it doesn't eliminate completely turbo lag, but it gets rid of it as much as you can. Uh, but it's a very prolific engine that they use in a lot of platforms, G-Wagons all over the place. Uh, this particular tune makes 603 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque. The car weighs about 4,800 pounds. Uh, Mercedes gives it a spec of zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. All the test magazines are getting more like 3.1. So it's, it's a big car, it's a behemoth, it's heavy, and it's pretty fast. Well, and it's getting at that, at that speed 
into supercar status almost, isn't it? Almost, almost, but with comfort, enormous amounts of comfort. And, and all the amenities you could ever ask for. Everything you can think of, uh, mood changing sense generators. If you open the doors and, and look at the edge of the window, uh, the, the window is two sheets of glass laminated together for sound attenuation. So when the, when the top is up on this car, it's a three layer top, it, the, the DB rating is only one DB worse than the coupe. So that's extremely quiet for, for a convertible. And one of the things, you know, pro, it's arguable, but one of the sweet spots for these cars in terms of luxury is the 560. It's a same engine, but detuned, and it's much quieter. What I like about this particular car is you can throttle open the valves or close the valves. So if you want that luxurious ride, you just stay out of the right pedal as much as you can and don't flick the switch. And it's very quiet and very luxurious. Flick it and open the valve and step on it and it's exciting. So I think that's pretty unique about this car. And it does have a great sound to it because I know we were out in it earlier and you hit it and it sounded like a Z06 Corvette or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it comes alive. It really alive. had that real muscle car sound to it. Yes, it does. And when we were driving it too, I also noticed that the bolsters kind of, they don't just hug you, but they actually <laughs> pressure, they, they give you pressure on they, whichever side the inertia is pushing you into. They kind of violate you. <laughs> yeah, they do a little bit. <laughs> yeah, on the, on, on the outboard side of the turn, uh, the bolsters come in and support you and try to hold the driver and passenger more upright in the seat. If you're not expecting it, it it's a little strange it's a little at first. shocking, right? Yeah. You're like, ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but once you're used to it I, it, I notice it if it's turned off and I turn it back on. What is it about driving this car that you really like? Well, I think the dual personality. There are, there are times when just being a big grand touring boulevard cruiser is is really enjoyable and soothing actually and relaxing and then when you want to get out on a country road and hit the pedal harder it'll respond i want to be clear though it's no sports car in, nothing that weighs almost 5,000 pounds is going to be a sports car but it it belies its mass and it belies its weight because it has an amazing drivetrain it's just a stunning drivetrain right and you could shock people with this car because they wouldn't expect it to be as powerful as it is. No, no. I mean, if you really wanted to and take someone off the line, you could be, you could put a lot of cars to shame with this. Yeah, you absolutely could. And comfort, I mean, there's nothing else like it really. I mean, I took a ride in it and the amount of um, airflow through the seats and heating in the seats, but not only in the seats, in the center armrest, on the door panels. Yep. Um, what else can you tell me about the amenities inside? Well, when the top's down, it has a, an outdoor temperature sensor and you can turn on, um, there's a, right at the back of your neck in the, in the head restraint, there's a, a little vent and it will monitor outdoor temperature and feed you airflow to warm the back of your neck while you're driving with the top down, which in cooler temperatures is, is, is pretty cool. And as you said, both center armrest and outboard armrest are heated. Uh, it also has uh, in the glove box um, a container of scented material. There's three different choices and you can set your mood and it will set the interior lighting, send you a certain amount of scent periodically set the temperature of your armrests, your seats, your airflow. It, it will just, you tell it what, whether you stimulated or relaxed or whatever, and it'll create that mood for you. And it's all pre-programmed. Or you can set your own program, which I have never done. It's, it's true opulence, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think you mentioned that you had had a, a Bentley and this rivals the Bentley. It definitely is designed to rival the Rolls-Royce Dawn and the Bentley GTC and I think it does it admirably. It's more athletic than than the Dawn by far. Um, the GTC was a great car. I prefer driving this. This is a better driving experience and I would say more comfortable too.
what makes it important to me is it's the the generation is the last generation. It's been canceled. So this car and the and the coupe that matches it is not coming back. It's been canceled for 2021, which is the last one canceled in 71. So 21, 71, there's that that, that uh, 50 year gap between those two. So that's fairly significant. So I expect that this car will always be with me until someone pries it out of my dead cold hands. <laughs> <laughs>